What's up my dudes? In this video I wanted to show you a power leveling option that you can provide for your friends or really just for yourself to be able to make some gold on the side because with the gear that I currently have in this video I'm able to do two pulls of stockades to clear it completely. Now this is specifically for the paladin. There are videos out there for mages and other classes that can run stockades. Paladins here are very good at this and I'll be providing in the description some timestamps to allow for you to check out the talents that I got, the gear that I have, and what kind of improvements we can expect as the phases go on and we move forward here. With the full judgment set and more spell damage gear, I might be able to pull off this with one pull. But of course, as many of you probably know, you only have five runs to be able to do for an hour. So speeding it up beyond two pulls a run really isn't that necessary at the moment. Now, as you guys can see, I'm doing these strafe jumps here, and it's really just to make sure I can parry and block, take less damage. And when you're hit from behind, you're more vulnerable. And as a paladin, when you're doing these pulls to keep your health up, you can use seal of light here and smack anyone who's close to you, as well as potentially judging the person with seal of light, then resealing yourself so that you can get that extra healing potential there if you really need it off of a big pull. Sometimes I don't judge just to get some mana management, but that's something you can consider depending on how much you want to be pulling here. So that's why I pay particular attention to always trying to face behind myself as I do these strafe jumps here to get that extra healing potential and keep myself alive as we go. Another good trick to learn for paladins is that you can use rank 1 consecration on these guys at the end of each room. It grabs them without you having to go in there and potentially get stunned and locked in. It just saves a little bit more time as well for the run. Another key thing to keep in mind is that if you are a dwarf paladin, and it's good to be able to use stone form. They do have diseases and stockades and they build up quite a bit. And also, it's good to have that 10% armor increase for a couple seconds. It just helps you mitigate as much damage as you can when you're taking all these hits. Now, if we're talking gold here to start, you'll typically see people running through stockades at a cost of two gold per person per run. So this means that for each group, unless of course you're making this free for one of your friends or something, you're going to be making eight gold per run from just the players that need the help in here. On top of that, one of my methods is to basically just have the players stay at the entrance. They'll get all the XP they need, while you are able to then loot everything for yourself, they still get a share of the uh, silver that's dropped from these mobs, so that's good. They get about 50 silver from each run. It actually just builds up their income a little bit more, so you might be able to do a couple more runs based on how many you plan on doing. On top of that, the greens, the blues, and cloth that you get can really sell well in the auction house. Each of the greens on average might go for about 40 to 50 silver, but it adds up, man, I'm telling you. So what I do is I'll go to the vendor right after each run. I'll sell the stuff, I'll repair, go straight to the auction house, do some quick selling. Uh, if you have Auctionator, you can do some really quick alt left click selling it just sort of hits it in the auction house and undercuts immediately so you don't have to go through a super slow process and anyways that's just sort of a recommendation that i have for you guys and still even with the selling and auctioning i might even sometimes still get locked out during that fifth run so it's good to be able to take some time in between each run to sell empty your bags because of course you're going to be doing a lot of looting for each one so gold per hour i make about 25 to 30 gold from just the drops off of these mobs again i'm auctioning off all of the greens and blues and cloth and sometimes the mana pots, the health potions, you know, these stuff, they go off on the auction house for a decent price just because, you know, 19 twinks are more prevalent these days given the phase that's out. So of course, on top of that, if you're charging two gold per person per run, make eight gold per run. If you do five runs in a lockout after one hour, that's of course 40 gold. Add that up, you got 65 to 70 gold per hour. So in this video, I did this run in about seven minutes exactly, but you could do it much faster, of course, if you were not looting yourself. But of course, at this point, I like to take the loot just because it adds quite a bit. It helps pay for repairs and even more so you know you get that 25 to 30 golden hour just from this stuff alone you also might be curious as to why i'm pulling these mobs at sort of the front area of this room here in the corner that's because due to some of the pathing in wow classic if i were to just pull them into the middle of a room they would begin to make a circle around me forcing me to sort of move around and make sure they're not hitting my back so keeping them in the corner of this room allows for me to sort of have them in this cone shape right in front of me so that i'm always parrying blocking taking less damage and also there's something about in those rooms where i found out if you're at one of the front corners right closest to the door, the mobs actually won't path out of the room. It's very, very rare that they do if you're in that corner. So it's just, it makes your life a little bit easier. You don't have to go around looking for bodies to loot. And also, of course, if the mobs don't run too far away from you, then you can sort of take them out a lot easier than normal. So that's a trick among the many others that I've learned after doing sort of an embarrassingly large amount of runs here. <laughs> just a real quick note on my route here. I like to pull the middle and the west wing initially as a full pull because a far majority of the mobs do not stun you. So you're able to just have a smooth run as you go. Their level range is also a little bit lower than the east wing so it's good to just get that sort of initial easy pull out of the way for the people at the front of the instance waiting for you this will likely provide the majority of the xp that they'll get from the run the second and last pull is just the east wing here you're going to get stunned quite a bit so you just got to be prepared for that sometimes i find that i get unlucky with the stuns where they do it one after the other forcing me to bubble a little bit early and put out that heal but of course as you guys probably would guess the end result is the same also as a note try and check around the instance for some unlocked chests around here you know they can provide sometimes 
time some nice BOE blues that you can sell in the auction house for a pretty penny. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some of the gear that I'm working with here to uh, improve my running potential. First up, we got the Judgment Crown. This I got from Onyxia, of course. The most important stat to keep in mind here is that as we go through the list, the Judgment set has a lot of spell damage that actually stacks with a lot of the abilities and enchants that we have on certain items, as well as just right off of the spell book from a Paladin. I'll also briefly go over the Electromagnetic Gigaflux Reactivator. That's an awesome name, I think, and this is a headpiece that drops off of the last boss in Nomer. I farmed this out. It took me about four runs to get this headpiece. This is a great piece because what you can do with it is use it to your advantage as a personal thorns buff. So I say that because, well, let's go over it. It says, on the on use effect, it channels a bolt of lightning and hurls it towards all enemies in front of the caster, causing 152 to 172 nature damage. The caster is then surrounded by a barrier of electricity for 10 minutes. So this initial use is actually really cool because you can use it and it takes about one second for the on use effect to go off. So what you can do is use it, you get that barrier buff, and you can switch to whatever headpiece you want to use. In this case, I would be using the judgment headpiece, and then the bolts of lightning to whoever's in front of you will go off. And this actually is really, really far reaching. I haven't really checked how far, but it's far enough to be able to pull a really, really good portion of the first haul of stockades for me. So if any of the lobies, you know, inch forward a little too far, then they really won't have to worry about it because that area will be clear for them. This is a really good piece. Again, it gives you that thorns buff, inflicts five nature damage on whoever attacks you. So again, it's just another thing that adds up with retribution aura and all these things. And if you don't have that thorns buff from another druid, then boom, this is the thing to go with. You can also, if you so desire, use this headpiece during a pull if you want to do some extra damage at the end of the pull when you're just trying to kill them down. You know, that 150 damage can make the difference between you living and dying. So going down for the neck, I have Master Sergeant's Insignia. You have to be a Master Sergeant to be able to buy this. You can equip it at whatever other rank you end up at. But uh, yeah, this has 17 stamina and 7 spirit. You buy it from the PvP vendor out in Stormwind, and it's a nice piece, a really nice piece. I recommend it just for that survivability. There are better pieces out there, of course, I'm sure, but uh, for now, this is what I'm rocking with. Lawbringer Spalders are next. I have this simply because of the high armor value. It has a lot of stamina, intellect, and increases my healing potential because, of course, you're going to be healing yourself a little bit here after bubbling and maybe even during bubbles if you're lucky enough not to get interrupted. Hide of the Wild I use because of the healing potential again. This I use for raiding, and I really have no other better cloak right now. Cloak of Flames is an option where when the attacker hits you, it deals five damage to them, but it's so rare right now. The only chance of getting it was really from the Colossus beings that you might be able to kill during the AQ gate opening event. Apart from that, it might drop from some of the mobs in Molten Core, but it's just a really, really rare piece, so if you do get your hands on it, then hold it tight. Demon Forge Breastplate, this costed me about 200 to 250 gold when I bought it off the auction house. The reason why it's so expensive is because it requires for the blacksmith who makes it to get 10 demonic runes at the very least on top of the other mats. Demonic runes, of course, are buying on pickups, so they would have to actually farm this themselves before they made it. That really does drive up the price. And also, it's just a really good AoE tanking piece. It's this equip proc that says when struck has a 3% chance of stealing 120 life from the attacker over 4 seconds. And the beauty of this piece is that I recently found out the drain life effect has a 0.4 to 0.5 times increase on the spell damage that you directly have. That's to say if you have about 300 spell damage, you should end up draining 270 life from a target when this procs. You'll be healed up quite a bit just as a result of being smacked around by a ton of mobs. It's pretty awesome, man. That is a really, really good piece to have, and that's why we want to have spell damage there, because spell damage not only stacks with this, but also more uh, life-stealing abilities that we'll go through as we go down this list. I also put the absorption enchant on this. It gives you a chance to absorb 25 damage from the attacker, which is really good. It also stacks well with force of will, which we'll get into, but Lawbringer Bracers, you know, again, just like the Spalders, this just increases a little bit of that survivability from the armor, gives you some intellect. It's really good, you know, mana per second. And also the set bonus, you know, if you have three of these on, it increases the chance of getting a Judgment of Light heal off by 10%. So that's really, really beneficial when you're going against so many mobs that are really smacking you down. So I've been playing around with weapons here. I used to use the Hanzo sword for quite a while, actually. It's a really fast sword, just as fast as the Flurry Axe. You know, a lot of people use the Flurry Axe now. I haven't been able to afford it yet. I had on the Hanzo sword the Fiery Blaze Enchant, and I'm sure you guys know about this. Once you put it on your weapon, you have a 15% chance to inflict 9 to 13 fire damage to all enemies within 3 yards that are attacking you, so this is an important thing to be able to use. It can only be used on the Alliance side, though, so for the Hordes, there might be an alternative. You can only use it once, though. You get it off of a quest in Badlands, but I was also told that if you have uh, someone else get this, then they can actually enchant your weapon with it, so there's always a way to sort of alternatively get 
get this enchant if you absolutely needed it and you already used it. And that might also, of course, suggest that if you put this enchant on like a white weapon or a weapon that's tradable, you know, after you put the enchantment on, you might be able to put it on the neutral auction house and a hoardy could actually end up getting this if you really wanted it. In any case, I actually like to use life stealing. So what I got recently was in Blackrock Depths, I got the Wraith Scythe. And the reason I use it is because it's a decently fast weapon, not too fast, but it has this chance on hit to steal 45 life from the target enemy. It does also stack with spell damage, which is great. Just like life stealing, it stacks with spell damage. And I found out that the proc chance from this chance on hit effect off of the Wraith Scythe is about 4%. If you guys are curious as to which other weapons are out there that have a life steal effect off of their chance on hit, I'd say the most relevant ones to talk about are Skullforge Reaver and Ancient Hakari Manslayer. So Skullforge Reaver's chance on hit is actually a heal over time ability that for every second for 30 seconds it drains 2 health. Proc chance on this is said to be about 8%, but the weapon speed is a little slower than the Wraith Scythe at about 2.5 seconds. It drops off a of Baron Rivendare and Stratholm at about an 8% chance drop. The Ancient Hakari Manslayer is a bit different here. It's faster by 0.2 seconds than the Wraith Scythe, and it has a better proc percentage than the Wraith Scythe at about a 6% proc chance. This weapon on its chance on hit steals 48 to 54 life from the target enemy. It does the most damage out of these other weapons, but of course it's not out yet. It's coming out in phase 4 when ZG releases, because that's where you get it from. It's dropped by Hakar at about a 4% drop chance, so if you do get your hands on this, you could test it out. With chance on hit life stealing weapons like these, it's really good to stack with the life stealing enchant and seal of light when you're attacking mobs. As good as these weapons are, I think there might be actually better weapons out there that don't have a chance on hit life steal. Iron Foe is the first weapon in question here. Its chance on hit is awesome. It grants two extra attacks on your next swing, which is really good if you have seal of light up. You know, the more swings you get, the more potential heal backs you can get from that seal. The proc chance on this is about a 10% proc chance is really, really good. The weapon speed is pretty slow though for doing these kinds of runs. It's at a 2.4 second speed. My preference is always to have a faster weapon, so this might not be my first choice, but it's a really, really good proc chance. So if you do get this, which by the way is extremely rare off the last boss in BRD at about a 0.19% drop chance, then yeah, you can definitely make this a part of your set. The more realistic option is the Flurry Axe. This is a world drop item, so you can get it off the auction house. The weapon speed is 1.5 seconds. Chance on hit grants one extra attack on your next swing instead of two. It has been confirmed that the Flurry Axe can proc off of itself. The proc chance is about 5 to 10%, which is really nice for this weapon speed. And yeah, besides other judgment pieces and spell damage pieces, this is probably one of the next pieces I'm going to be looking at for my set. Lastly is Hand of Edward the Odd. This is a nice and fast weapon, just like the Flurry Axe. It's a speed of 1.6 seconds. As opposed to the other weapons we've talked about in this list, it actually has some stats on top of the chance on hit ability. So it has 13 intellect and 10 spirit. That'll be nice to just keep your mana pool up. The chance on hit is really, really cool. It says that the next spell cast within four seconds will cast instantly. I would say this works really well for a paladin if you need to put out an instant holy light. Problem is, the proc chance is about 2.7% from what I've seen. But again, at a weapon speed like this, it's not really as bad as you might think. People say that they get about a proc every 50 seconds. So I think when you're in instances where you can do longer pulls, this will actually pay off. Especially when you have more crit gear, you're probably specced into illumination on the holy tree. You'll not only at that point when this procs get an instant holy light off, but also you have a higher chance at critting, which gives you 100% mana back off of that holy light. So it's a total win-win there. So I'd say for AoE tanking here, this is for the later game for us pallies. For right now, focus on getting the flurry axe. I think that's best in slot for us, besides maybe iron foe. On top of that, we got the skull flame shield and the force reactive disc. I use both of these, but mainly in stockades, I just use the skull flame shield. You don't need the force reactive disc unless you're in a really bad spot and you have to kill people quick. Skull flame shield has a ton of armor. You want to put a thorium spike on it. You know, it gives some extra damage off every time you block. It has two equip abilities, the first of which, of course, also stacks with spell damage. It's another life steal. It has a 3% chance of stealing 35 life from the target enemy. Again, all this life steal really adds up. You know, sometimes I find myself just looking at my health bar where I expect it to just go down severely, but since I have so many mobs on me, it's actually just gradually going up. Really cool thing to see. So, the second equip proc is when struck in combat has a 1% chance of dealing 75 to 125 fire damage to all targets around you. So this is just like the fiery blaze enchant, just like it, except of course it just does more damage. Now I'll just briefly go over the force reactive disc. Again, you don't have to have this. I recommend the skull flame shield just because of that life steal. It really adds up. But the force reactive disc, it has a little bit more armor than the skull flame shield. But what's really important is that, of course, the equip proc is just amazing. So every time you block, it gives off this electric sort of attack towards every enemy around you. You can think of it as like a shield spike, except the spike is attacking everyone. And, you know, it gives off this really, really cool effect. I calculated it out and it does about 50% of the damage 
damage that Consecration does. And for reference, Consecration also stacks with spell damage. It's a very minuscule stack, but you know, it stacks up nonetheless. In any case, it's a really, really good piece, but first I would recommend to get the Skull Flame Shield. Now there's actually a lot of trinkets to go over, you know, with like Essence of Pure Flame from MC and Ramstein's Lightning Bolt and Stratholme. But I'm actually just gonna show you what I personally use because, you know, I only have a certain amount of trinkets thus far. Anyways, I'll go over future trinkets that you guys can use potentially as the phases come out and maybe as I improve my own personal set. I normally use Force of Will and Uther's Strength. So I use Force of Will because, you know, it has that chance to reduce all melee damage taken by 25 for 10 seconds. It also gives you a defense increase a little bit, which is nice. It's a nice bonus. So I noticed that this procs a lot. You really want to use this as a result. Uther's Strength also procs a lot with so many people attacking you. It has a 2% chance of when struck in combat, protecting you with a Holy Shield. I think it absorbs about 200 damage. Not that much, but again, with so many mobs attacking you, a 2% chance is quite a lot more significant than you might think. I also have Chained Essence of Aranicus. I got this when I was running through, I believe, Sunken Temple. It's from a quest that provides you with this reward. I know of a few people who have disenchanted the thing, but anyways, it's a really good piece to be able to use with AoE tanking. If maybe you don't have as much spell damage gear as I have yet, or as many thorns pieces as I have, this is a good piece to sort of just help you along in killing these mobs really quick. Over 45 seconds, every 5 seconds, this trinket inflicts 50 nature damage on whoever is around you when you use this trinket. And so that's really good, you know, it does 450 damage over that span of time. If during your pull you want to send this out and kill some mobs as you go, you can do that. Or at the end of your pull, you know, it's just good to add a little bit of extra damage on top of what you're already doing with Consecration, Retribution Aura, and all that good stuff. Now for rings, I use the infamous Naggle Ring. I say it's infamous because a lot of people try to farm this out and they don't have a lot of luck because it's not the highest drop chance. But if you do end up getting this from the Golem Lord boss, it is a great ring. Why? Because it, of course, has that Thorns ability to inflict three arcane damage to anyone who attacks you. So that's 100% proc there. It gives you some extra defense, gives you some stamina. Really, really good AoE tanking ring. A lot of tanks go for this. I have the heavy dark iron ring. I got this from MC. That was just lucky enough to be able to get it because no one else wanted it and I could use it, I suppose. So it helps a lot to have that extra defense and stamina yet again. Again, Lawbringer boots. This just adds to the set bonus for the Judgment of Light. More armor, more stamina, more intellect. And again, the Judgment Lex here, really, really good. I got this off of Ragnaros. Gives you that spell damage increase. Increases a lot of things here with lifesteal and consecration. I got the Deathbone Girdle from Sholomans. Just more defense rating and stamina. And of course, Razor Gauntlets from the last boss in Dire Mall East. These you can really easily get, actually, if you just spam some DMEs jump runs with someone. I'm sure many people will be willing to do this with you, as my experience showed. But anyways, it has the same exact proc as a Naggle Ring. It inflicts three arcane damage to the attacker when struck. So that's really, really nice. So anyways, guys, you might not need a ton of extra stuff for this. I mean, people will use Oil of Immolation from Alchemist, Crystal Charges from the Ungaro Crater, Dragon Breath Chili from Cooks. You know, all this stuff can add up quite a bit, but you don't really need it for stockades. You know, this is something you can really self-sustain with. So with that said, guys, let's go into the talents we got here. So in the Holy Tree, I pretty much have it set up so that I have all of what I need for healing and raids. As a Holy Paladin, you know, I want to make sure that I have Divine Favor, Holy Power to give me that spell crit increase, Improved Land Hands to get that extra armor value just in case I need to use it during a pull. Illumination, of course, working as a precursor to Divine Favor. The more spell crit gear we get, the more self-sustaining we become in these big pulls. It'll really progress in an awesome way as Holy Paladin scaled really well throughout the phases. Consecration, of course, Improved Land Hands I went with. You know, this is really up to you. You can play around with it a little bit, I'm sure. But the main thing was to be able to give myself enough room to get Blessing a Sanctuary in the Protection Tree. And you know, Blessing a Sanctuary, it's beautiful, man. It's like basically you can consider it Force of Will on all the time, you know, because it reduces all damage taken by 24 for the whole time that you have it. And blocked melee attacks cause 35 holy damage to the attacker. Also, as a quick reference to this, if you want to be able to loot everything out of stockades without needing to delete stuff and sort of waste your time in that manner, you're going to have to go into stocks with maybe 40 free spaces in your bags. Maybe a little less you can afford to have maybe 35 free spaces, something like that. But I've done at this point almost 250 runs of stockades. So again, it's sort of like an embarrassingly significant part of my level 60 experience here. It's a good way for me to make gold. I appreciate the sort of run a lot and I love helping out friends with this thing, man. I just have fun with it. People always ask me, you know, how do you keep track of how many runs you have left before you're locked out for the hour? You know, you can only do five runs for the hour. So what I use to keep track of all this is an add-on called Instance Counter. I got it from the Twitch app. You can go right in and just download that off. To activate it, you just do slash IC. You can see all the commands for that. So typically if you're locked out, for example, you could check how much time you have left before you can
can enter the instance back so you can tell your party how much time they have to wait or how much time they have to take a break. That gives you the exact either count of how many instances you can do for the rest of the hour or how much time you have until you can get into your next instance if you're locked out currently. So that's it guys. I hope that really helps. If you want me to expand on anything here, let me know in the comments section. I'm always happy to make content for you guys. So I appreciate it a ton. Again, I just want to say thank you to my patrons for uh, continually supporting me. You guys are really cool for, for doing that. And you know, I, uh, I'm glad to give back in whatever way I can. So thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. This is his first mount. Got my first mount at level 30. Level 30, baby. He's, he's hacking the game. Turns out though, it only goes uh, walking speed. So yeah, you know, take that for what it is.